All right, we're live. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. Back in here with another video. As always, we're going to start off with the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn Book, number 63, What a Day That Will Be. Uh, what a day that will be. <clears throat> um, then we're, uh, we're going to have an opening reading. From the book of Isaiah, chapter uh, 66, or excuse me, 65. And then um, I'm going to uh, get into a little bit of preaching. And then uh, we're going to close in prayer and then always give God the last word of uh, reading from Revelation. So let's begin, shall we? Good to see you. Uh, number 63, what a day that will be. <clears throat> There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. Oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Oh, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. Oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Oh, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Oh, what a day, a glorious day that will be. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a great day when we see uh, the face of Jesus. Our opening reading today is in the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, as I told you, uh, chapter 65, and we're going to read verses 17 through the end if you want to read along. The Bible says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind, but ye but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create for. Behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands, they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth nor bring forth for trouble. 
for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. Greetings, friends and colleagues, brothers and sisters. How are you doing today? It's good to see you. The verse I wanted to focus in on today is in Isaiah 65, verse 17. It says, Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. There's a famous saying that goes, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. And that's so true. If you've ever been away from home for any length of time, <laughs> uh, you, you just start to miss it, don't you? You get homesick. And if uh, wherever you're at, even if you're at a nice place to be, it's a great place where you're at. Um, there's good people, good food. It's comfortable there. Um, it's just, it's not like your own home, right? With your own bed and, and where you feel, you'll never feel quite as safe as you are in your own home. Well, friends, today I'm, I'm happy that we can call this place, this earth, the place that we live in, this beautiful creation that God has made for us, our home. It's an amazing place to be. And, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that there's a place for everybody, right? There's a place for people who like it cold. There's a place for people who like it hot, for people who like it dry or or human at sea level in the mountains. There's a place for everybody. Well, if you have if you have your uh, King James Bible, um, open up to uh, Genesis chapter one. We're going all the way back to the beginning. First page in the Bible, Genesis chapter one, and we're going to read verse thirty one at the end of the first chapter. The Bible says. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God created this place. He created all things for us, and he said it was very good. God created a place for us to live that was very good. He gave us a home, a good home, a very good home. I mean, just like everywhere else in the universe, if you look at all the different planets and, and the moon, there's no life there. You, you wouldn't want to call that place your home. You couldn't live there. Now, sometimes it's nice to get out of home, right? We uh, And travel the world, and, and or maybe not the world, but just travel anywhere, right? You shouldn't be cooped up in your home all the time. It's nice to go to different places and see different things. Because um, there's other wonderful places in the world to go. Meet new people, right? Maybe... You have friends or family uh, abroad or, or who live farther away. They're not living in your home. But friends, my message today is going to be somewhat of a, of a warning, right? Because uh, there's another famous saying that goes, home is where your heart is. Home is where your heart is. In other words, home is an idea in your mind. It's not a physical location. It's not a place. What I'm trying to get at and what I'm trying to say is this, that although the earth is a great place to be, great place to live, it's an amazing place that we can call home for now, we need to be careful not to get too comfortable here, okay? Why? Because the Bible says that one day God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And if his first one that he created was very good, his second one is going to be even better, right? I mean, just look at the Bible. We have an Old Testament and we have a New Testament, but God gave us something better. He gave us a better testament, the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 22 says, By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Not just a New Testament, a better one. And notice that God spoke through Isaiah. He said, And the former things shall not be remembered. That's how good it's going to be. Like I said, this place, this earth is beautiful. But did you know that one day 
we won't even remember it. <laughs> when we get to heaven, it's going to be so much better there that we won't even remember this place. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we should just t- uh, not take care of our planet, not take care of where we're at now. It's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that my point is, is that my message today is about how we shouldn't get attached to this place. We shouldn't get attached to the things of this world. Um, if you have your Bible, open up to 2 Peter in the New Testament, and we're going to go to chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3 in the New Testament. And imagine if someone came along and told you, hey, I'm going to give you a free upgrade to your house. Okay, You're going to get a complete remodel. I'm going to remodel your whole house with everything new. It's going to be way better. It's going to be upgraded. Um, but what if that contractor who told that to you said, but you need to prepare. Okay, You need to clear some things out of your house and get ready right, for the upgrades that are coming in, for the new stuff. That bed that you're so attached to that you sleep in every night. You need to get ready to get rid of that thing because I'm going to move it out and get you a better one. We can't get so uh, attached to our things because we're getting new things. We're getting better things, right? You think you might miss your old stuff, right? But if you get better stuff, you know, you you wouldn't miss your old stuff, right? Now, obviously, I'm just using an example, an analogy here. But, you know, one day God's going to clear a lot of stuff out of our lives. And he's going to give us a whole new home, a mansion in heaven, a better home than we have right now. So we need to have the mindset. We need to prepare for that. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 10. Starting in verse 10, the Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Burned up. One day, the Bible says that this place, this planet, will be burned up with fire, destroyed. Everything that we hold dear, if you have something in your safe at home, one day it's going to be gone. You know, now don't get me wrong, I have a lot of treasures here on this earth too. I have things in the safe, but the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, I wanted to turn there, you don't have to turn there, but I wanted to read this for you real quick. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, Jesus says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You say, well, Sean, when I'm dead, I won't care about this stuff anymore. So what does it matter if it's going to be gone? Yeah, that's true. That's true. One day, uh, according to the Bible, your things will be destroyed. They will be gone. But we should be careful not to, not to care about our earthly treasures more than our heavenly treasures right now. Right? Why? Because if we get too attached to things here right now on this earth. We're going to get distracted. We're not going to prepare properly. If we're too busy taking care of our earthly treasures, we're going to forget about what's really important and take our mind off what's really important. Let's go back to uh, 2 Peter, or if you're, you should still be there. 2 Peter, let's look at chap, uh, chapter 2, verse, or excuse me, chapter 3. Uh, we're in verse 12, or we're in verse 11 says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Lord, or excuse me, of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. It's a question mark. Excuse me. The Bible is saying, look, since everything's going to be burned up anyways, right? We need to be more focused on living our lives holy. We need to be focused on godliness. On having a holy conversation, the Bible says. That's what matters right now. That's what we should treasure right now and what we should be focused on. Are our conversations with people centered around Christ? They should be. They should be. I mean, what are we talking to people about? What are we making posts on social media about nowadays? Are we looking for the coming of 2021? 
<laughs> are we looking for the close of 2020? Or are we looking for the coming of the day of God? What are we looking for? Maybe you're too busy looking for more money. Maybe you're too busy looking for a new relationship or a new car or a new house or whatever it is. What we need to be looking for is having a whole, a, a more holy conversation. We should be looking for ourselves to be more loving to people, more godly. What gets you more excited, the coming of the Lord or the new latest iPhone, right? The new earth, 2.0, the new heaven, it's going to be so much better. That's what we need to get excited for, heavenly things. We need to prepare for it. You say, well, okay, Sean, how do I prepare? Well, we need to start, number one, by not getting attached to the things of this world. And number two, we need to focus on the things of heaven. We need to focus on spiritual things because one day this earth will pass away. Let's continue in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse, we're in verse 13. The Bible says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found in him in peace, without spot and blameless. Amen. The Bible says to be diligent. What does that mean, to be diligent? That means to be consistent, to be devoted, to be dedicated. Somebody who's diligent sets their priorities straight. Where should our priorities be? We need to be focused on heavenly things. That's what the Bible says. Flip over or flip back a few chapters to Colossians. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. We're going to go to chapter 3. Um... And we're going to start in verse 1 there. <clears throat> the Bible says, <clears throat> If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. If we be risen with Christ, if you're a born-again Christian, the Bible says we need to seek things which are above. We need to be looking forwards to our new home in heaven. This place, this planet is great, but it's not our home. Heaven is where we want to be, right? Heaven is where our ultimate resting place is going to be, amen? Amen. So why do we get so comfortable here? The Bible tells us over and over again, set your affection on things above. Look for the new heaven and the new earth. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, Jesus said. And that's uh, what we need to be looking forward to. Not the things of this world that uh, will get us distracted on what we should be focused on. That's what the devil is trying to do for us. He's trying to get us to doubt that God's preparing a place for us, right? Now look, friends, I'm not telling you not to get comfortable here and enjoy this place, right? We should get comfortable. We should enjoy our lives and have, a, uh, I mean, God gave us a very good place to live, right? Um, <laughs> everything he's created is very good, amen? But, you know, we shouldn't get so comfortable that, you know, we stop seeking the Lord, okay? We shouldn't get so comfortable here that we stop reading our Bible, that we stop praying, that we stop sharing the gospel of Jesus with others. We stop fellowshipping with other like-minded Christians. We need to be diligent so that we can be blameless. Now, that doesn't mean sinless. Blameless. Why? Look, <clears throat> imagine if you're lost in the woods, okay? You're lost in the woods. You can't find your way out. You're stranded away from your home. You're alone. You, and, and you have to just rely on, on somebody to help you, somebody to rescue you, someone to save you. You know, they say that the number one thing that kills people who are stranded out in, in the wilderness, it's not starvation. It's not being injured. It's not being attacked by a wild animal. It, it, it's a loss of hope. They lose hope. They stop looking for a way out. They give up. They fall into despair and depression and, 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 they, stop, and they stop trying to find their way back home. 
That's why they never make it back home. Jesus said in John 14, you don't have to turn there, but in verse 2, or excuse me, I'm going to read three verses. You can turn there if you want. Um, let's turn there, why not? John 14, verse 2. Or excuse me, we're going to read three verses. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Verse 2, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it, were not, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may also be. Jesus says, look, fear not. I'm preparing a place for you. I'll be back. Just hang on. Don't lose hope. Our king did not abandon us. Jesus did not just leave us here to die. He said, I'm coming back. And not only am I going to come back, right now I'm preparing a place for you, a better place, a mansion in heaven. Our king's coming back. He will return. And he's going to rescue us. He's going to take us home to a new heaven so we don't have to fall into depression. We don't have to lose hope. So what do we do in the meantime, right? It's party time, right? Party time. Live it up. Let's do it. No, no, no. It's not party time. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to keep our focus on heavenly things. Because Jesus said, I'm preparing a place for you. So we need to prepare to go there, right? I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm planning a trip or I'm planning to go somewhere, wherever it is, maybe I'm just going down the street to the market or, or maybe I'm going uh, far away to a different state or a different country, you know, I always make sure that I plan ahead of time and I and I prepare what I'm going to need when I get there. My wallet, my phone, my keys, whatever I need. Wherever I'm going, I make sure I have what I need, right? And I always pack with plenty of time ahead, okay? I don't prepare my things at the last second and just throw everything in my bag. I don't like to rush. Why? Because I might forget something, right? Last thing you want to do is get is get to the market and realize, oh, I don't have any money to pay for the things that I need. Right? So, I mean, I think too many people nowadays think that, well, I'll, I'll just go to church later in my life. I'm still young right now. Right? I can do that later. I have time. I'll read the Bible later. <laughs> I can live a holy life later. Right now, I'm going to drink and live it up. I have plenty of time to prepare for heaven later. But friends, you know what's going to happen if you do that, if you have that strategy. Those people are not going to be fully prepared when the time comes. They're going to rush and they're going to forget things. Because if you're not diligent on doing what you need to do right now, if you try to pack your things at the last second, you're going to forget things. And when we're and where we're going to heaven... You're not going to be able to come back and get it once you leave, once you leave it behind. Everything's going to be burned up. It's going to be gone. You're not going to be able to come back for it. And we're not going to be able to take physical things with us where we're going either. So we shouldn't treasure the physical things here. Those things are going to get burned up too. So think about that. You know, that person that, that you could have shared the gospel with, right? You knew they didn't believe in Jesus. You could have told them something. You could have shared with them how to get saved and you didn't because you said, hey, I'm too busy. You know, I got to go do things of this world. I got to focus on getting my money. And, you know, that person's soul might be burned up one day. They might not make it home because you didn't share the way of how to get home with them. The last thing that... Uh, you want to do when you get home is to look around and your loved ones aren't there your friends aren't there with you you know I, I'm reminded of a movie called Home Alone maybe you've seen it right back in the 90s um, the whole premise of this movie Home Alone is about this this family packs uh, packs every, packs everything up and they're gonna go on a vacation right they're gonna take a plane trip and go on a vacation and they're so anxious to get to where they're going that they forget their youngest child, Kevin, right? They leave him home alone. 
and it ruins the whole trip. They can't even enjoy their trip when they finally get there because they left Kevin behind. So the whole uh, scramble is now how do we get reunited back with Kevin? You know, we can't leave our friends and our families, our neighbors, our co-workers behind where we're going. We want to take them with us, right? We need to make sure that they know how to get to that, that they know how to get back home. Okay, we need to make sure we're sharing the gospel, that people hear the gospel of how to get there, how to get to heaven. All right? You say, well, I don't, I don't know anybody, Sean. They're all, you know, who am I supposed to talk to? Nobody wants to listen to me. Listen, I know that, you know, they may be strangers to you. But that stranger to you is somebody's sister, somebody's brother, somebody's mom, somebody's dad, somebody's grandson. Somebody's uncle or aunt or niece or nephew, somebody's best friend, their husband, their wife. How would you feel if one of your dearest loved ones was lost? They couldn't find their way back home. And some stranger who you didn't even know showed them the way back. Brought them back home to you. That would be the greatest feeling, right? The greatest gift. You would love that stranger. That stranger would be your new best friend. Now, is that not worth more than your new, than your new iPhone or your new car? What I'm what I'm stressing right now is soul winning. Okay. Material things of this world should not take a priority over people's souls. Getting people to heaven, getting them home. Look, if your family's already saved, your whole family, amen. Praise God for that. That's great. But, you know, I don't know about you, but for me, heaven just won't be heaven if it's just my family there, right? I want to see your family there too, amen. I want to see my neighbors there. I want to see everybody there that I possibly can see. So we need to be our brother's keeper, okay? We need to love our neighbor as ourself, right? We need to understand that just because we're on our way to heaven, Okay, we're on our way home. Now we can't stop trying to point other people to Christ, to show other people the way home. Now I don't have all the answers, okay? But I want to share with you one strategy that I use that's that's proven to be somewhat effective when I talk to strangers or when I uh, talk to people who doubt the Bible, who uh, doubt their uh, Jesus Christ and all this stuff about heaven. Um. I always start off by asking them a question. Why do I start with a question? Because nobody likes to be bossed around, okay? Especially if they don't believe the Bible. They don't want the Bible bossing them around and telling them what to do. So I don't start preaching to them, hey, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and repent. Like, no, no, no. I start off with a question very kindly. Um, very friendly. I always ask people this. I say, I say, hey, listen. If there was a place that you could go where there's no dying, there's no death, there's no suffering, no pain, nobody steals from each other, nobody's going to lie to you, nobody's going to kill you, nobody's going to cheat on you, there's no divorcing, right, no cheating, no crying, no babies dying, okay, no mothers losing their babies. No painful childbirth. Amen, women? Now, 99% of the... All right, and then I ask them this. I say, would you want to go there? Would you want to go there? And 99% of the time, they say, yes, of course. That would be great. So I find that common ground first with them. And I say, yeah, me too. Me too. I, w I would love to go there too. But if that place were to exist, if such a place were to exist, we, we would know about it because this place is not that place, right? But you know, if that place existed, somebody would have had to have come from there to tell us about it, right? Yeah, and, and tell us how to get there. Well, it just so happens that there's one credible person in history who has actually claimed to have come from there. And in fact, he told us how to get there. Jesus Christ. Maybe you've heard of him. Do you know what he said? That we must do to get there? A lot of times people tell, well, you have to live a good life. You have to follow the commandments. And I say, no. That's actually not what he said. 
John 3, 16, the most famous verse in the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus said, look, you don't have to live a perfect life to come home. All you have to do is believe. Believe in me. Don't lose your hope. I died to save you. Believe me. Do you believe that? And then I go on to tell him, you know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, you know. And I tell him, I'm not going to heaven because I'm a good person, okay. I go to heaven because I am I know the way is through Jesus, right. It's through what I believe. I believe that he died for me, that he paid for my sins, that he saved me. And I sure would love to see you there too. When I get there, brother, I want to see you there too. So we need to be gentle with unbelievers. You know, we need to be kind. We need to be loving. Why? Because, friends, there's some people out there who are lost in the woods, so to speak, right? They, they've forgotten about home, okay? They, they've lost their hope. They, they've gotten comfortable here in the woods. They forgot that home even exists, that there's a place that we can go that's better, let alone, you know, they don't they don't know that through faith in Jesus is how you get there, right? They don't believe that heaven's even real. Because this world is so dark, it's so sinful and dreadful. They can't see it anymore. They lost their hope. And well, that's why God calls us to be blameless. That's why He calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Why? To remind them, hey, remember home? <laughs> Friends, how are we going to remind people of home? How are we going to get them to be excited about going to heaven unless we bring a little piece of home here to earth? Bring some love. Bring some kindness. Some some forgiveness. Some charity. Some understanding. Some peace. Not to get too comfortable here, but say, hey, look. Where I'm going... Kindness and love is going to be more abundant than we could even imagine. And these are things that you can't go to the store and buy. You can't go to the store. Last time I checked, I can't go to the store and buy a genuine friend who loves me. It's not for sale. That's why that's our job as Christians. We need to be the salt of the earth. We need to be a lot more inviting to people. Invite them back home with us. Whenever I travel to a new place, if I ever go uh, and stay at a hotel or something somewhere, there's nothing more welcoming than than uh, when the person greets me. Hello, how are you doing? Is there anything that you need? Can I get you anything? Can I help you with your bags? Can I direct you anywhere you need to go? You know, that's what we need to be for people. We need to be that person who greets people, who invites them over, who says, hey, come on, let's go home. Let's go to Jesus. Because maybe they don't know how to get there, you know. We need to give give them a reason why they should want to go home, right? Why they should want to find out, what's this heaven all about? What's this Jesus all about? Friends, that's my message for the day. We need to not only remind ourselves that there is a heaven. We need to, but that there's a heaven waiting for us. Jesus is there and we need to help other people get there. That's what we need to do. We need to remind them. And in order to do that, we need to encourage them. We need to love them. And if we're going to encourage people to get there, we need to clean up our lives. We need to live more holy lives. We need to have our conversation set on heavenly things. We need to take extra care to prepare to go there. Because the last thing we want to do is get home and look around and our loved ones aren't there. So anyway, that's my message for the day, guys. Let's uh let's remember home and how and how great it's gonna be and let's go tell other people about it. And uh because I want to see you there. I want to see you there. Amen. Um, like I said, we're gonna uh, close in prayer, and as always, we're gonna give God the last word. So uh if you want to bow with me in prayer. 
Um, let's pray and then we're going to uh, have a closing reading from Revelations chapter 7 verses 9 through the end or verses 9 through 17. But anyway, it's been it's been a blessing uh uh with you with you that with you today guys. Um have a great day and thank you for listening. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> dear Jesus, dear heavenly Father, thank you for this message. And uh Lord, I thank you for creating this planet. This is very very good creation of yours. It's so great, Lord and um Lord, but I know that this isn't my permanent home. This isn't where we're going to stay forever, for all eternity. Father, we know that you have so much greater things to offer us. And we're really thankful for that. We really appreciate what you've given us here now. Lord, we ask that you help remind us to keep our focus on heavenly things. This world can uh, distract us with a lot of glitter and gold. But we know that it's it's just temporary, Lord. And we need to set our focus on you. So help us be diligent and prioritize things in our lives that would uh, bring you glory, Lord. Lord, if there ever was a time in history that people wanted to escape uh, the madness that's going on around the world right now, this pandemic, and just go home, it's now, Lord. So I ask that you inspire people who hear this message to invite more people back to a home with you and remind them of what you did for us in order to get there and to stop seeking earthly treasures, Lord, but to treasure heavenly things. Lord, give us a heart that truly cares for people and wants to see them home with us, home with you in heaven. We love you, Father, and we thank you for everything that that you've done for us in the past and everything you're doing now and Everything that you're going to do and give us in the future, Lord, that we're we're so excited to have. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Thank you for listening to this message. And we're going to have a closing reading from Revelations chapter uh, 7. We're going to give God the last word. Amen. Have a great day. God bless. Starting in verse 9. Revelation chapter 7, the Bible says, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people, and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation! To our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be unto our God, forever, and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto, the, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more. Neither thirst any more, neither shall sunlight on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. Amen.